All right, we are entering the last section of orientation where we are going to just talk briefly about week one. So the question is, if you really want to get going and start this course after we hang up, um, what is it that you're supposed to do? So first of all, um, week one is focused on adaptability. So one of the things we're going to do right away is kind of um, start talking about those structures that might be useful to you to use knowing that number one, you may not be able to fit everybody in your classroom. Number two, that at any time between today and Thanksgiving, you could be told that you're moving your class completely online. Um, and we wanna get you to a place where you feel ready for that. So that's really what week one is about. It's also primarily about our students. So it's not about making your course adaptable. It's about making your course adaptable to the actual learners in your course. So we're not just going to talk about structures as if they don't attach to people. We're going to talk about structures and we're going to talk about what needs people have during a crisis and what things we might do in our courses to make our students feel like we have flexibility and that they're going to be able to persist in the course, even if they face a lot of challenges that they wouldn't normally face. So with that, um, what Martha's gonna do now is she's actually going to look specifically at the week one curriculum so that by the time we hang up today, you'll feel like you can really get going on the work of the course. Many of you are gonna feel like you need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time before you're ready to jump in. And uh, at the end of this session, we're gonna have questions and answers that we will not record. So you can stay and ask um, questions as long as you want. But the other thing is that you have, um, most of you, a mentor channel um, there in your, um, in your team. And one thing you can do, in addition to asking questions in the open discussion forum anytime you want, you can go into your mentor team um, because your mentors are, they have signed on for this because they particularly want to help you um, with all of the pieces of this workshop. They may not know all the answers, but they're your partners in figuring things out. So a great place to start if you have questions is by asking your mentor something um, or asking the other folks in your mentor group. So with that, I'll hand it over to Martha who will take a look at week one. Great, I am going to share my screen again. Are we recording again, Robin? Oh, yes. Yes, in fact, it's not. I, I was gonna say thanks for reminding me, but apparently I already did that, so all good. So everybody should be seeing the week one page right now. And um, now I'm gonna dive a little, before I was just kind of giving you an overview of what the structure of a week looked like, but I'm gonna dive a little bit more into what we're gonna be doing this week as we begin. Um, again, drop in hours, Tuesday through Thursday, 8.30 to 9.30. Please feel free to join us in the Zoom room. If you have questions, those questions can be about the work of the workshop. They can also be about, I'm really lost in teams. Can you help me so that I can be successful in the workshop? We can help you with anything that comes up. Um, for something fun this week, there is a Twitter chat um, from 7 to 8 p.m. There's a link there to more details. Um, on the 13th, which is today, um, where we're going to be discussing this article, We Are Not Okay and You Shouldn't Be Either, a really fun topic, which is why we thought we should put it for something fun. It's a serious topic, but it is an opportunity to get out of the workshop itself um, and talk with some folks, not just here at PSU, but in the broader Twitter um, learning community about um, some really important issues surrounding the work that we're doing right now. Um, for Get Out of Town, some of you, a lot of you already know about this, um, and this first one does start today, um, but ASU is hosting a two-day um, faculty summit called Remote um, that runs virtually. It's free, July 13th and 14th. I think there's something like 80 sessions over two days, some amazing presenters and speakers who are talking about all kinds of issues related um, to fall teaching um, during COVID-19. Um, some of them are disciplinary specific. So if you teach in a discipline where you're really feeling challenged by the idea of doing um, remote high flex, hybrid teaching, whatever we wanna call it, um, please check that out. Um, even though it starts today, I think you can still go ahead and register and um, just join in. Um, and then Campus Compact is offering something um, 
a session this week on the 16th called Engaging Online, Promising Practices in E-Service Learning and Digital Civic Engagement. So if you do any kind of teaching that um, has to do with civic engagement or working in the community doing, um, doing service learning, they're really thinking about how that could happen without face-to-face -face interaction. So that might be an interesting workshop to attend later this week. Jason will be leading our tech session tomorrow, Tuesday the 14th at 1. It's going to be on Microsoft Teams and Moodle. So not so much an orientation to using Teams for the workshop, but an orientation to how you could use Teams for your own courses this fall, as well as Moodle, our learning management system. Um, two really key platforms when we're thinking about the value this week of adaptability um, and how the technology that we choose can underpin or thwart our efforts to be adaptive. So um, thinking about Teams and Moodle um, as spaces and tools that can really um, foster our, our, um, our adaptive uh, te uh, techniques and approaches in our classes. In learning cohorts, again, you and your mentor should be connecting at some point later today via your Teams channel to find a time when you could meet for an hour. That's going to be a little bit of back and forth with, well, I can do it this time. Well, I can't do it that time. Could you do it this time? Luckily, those cohorts are fairly small. I think Robin said most of them are four to five participants at this point. I don't think any of them are supposed to get much larger than that. Um, so it shouldn't be too hard to find an hour during the times when you said you were available to meet and talk. And we have a couple of questions here um, for you to talk about in your cohorts um, about um, how you adapted this past spring, about your own um, flexibility as an instructor, even pre-COVID times, um, and how you feel um, adaptability really plays a role going forward in the future of higher ed and specifically maybe in the future of our own courses here at PSU. Moving into this week's schedule, um, on Monday, the first activity you are doing right now, um, which is joining us here. Um, again, this will be recorded, so you can always revisit this session. We have two things that we've asked you to review for Monday, one of which is this link, Four Models for High Flex Course Design, which is something that I put together this summer that I encourage you to take some time and look at. Um, this is our attempt to define and understand high flex within the context of teaching at an institution like PSU, where we care so much about our relationships with students and about working closely with students. Um, it's an attempt to really rethink the model that Robin was talking about before of you standing in front of a room and students joining in via a tiny camera in the back um, and being a fly on the wall. Um, and, and instead to rethink a uh, hybrid flexible as something um, that we consider highly flexible, where we're really focusing more on um, the flexibility of our pedagogy and less on the modality of hybridity. Um, that was a lot of big words, but it kind of makes sense when you go and read it. Um, but these are four different models to get you thinking about how you might adapt your own courses in the fall to meet that kind of high flex expectation, but without overwhelming yourselves by having to do three different course designs for every course you're preparing. Um, in your workbook, we've asked you to um, think about how those models relate to your fall teaching. And then every week on Mondays, we'll ask you to look over the checklist for the week and make notes in your workbook about the specific things that you want to tackle. Um, and then finally, in the discussion forum, we call it the discussion forum here. That's just Teams. Um, we're going to ask you to reflect on one or of both of the following prompts. This is um, when Hannah was showing Teams. You noticed there were a number of channels that had numbers next to them, um, 19 and 18. Um, those correspond to this week's prompts. And so it should be really clear which channel you need to go to in order to respond to this reflection prompt. If you're confused, just give us a shout out in the, in the general channel or in the uh, open discussion channel and we'll point you to the right place. Um, right, let me jump in on that for one yeah. second and say, um, the Teams channels so I, I have come to really make my peace with Teams and, and in the collab, we, we weirdly uh, like it quite a bit. Um, 
but Teams does not let us organize the channels in the way that uh, we do, given our penchant for color coding and organizing everything in the collab. Um, so I, what I have to do to make it work is put random numbers, and I have this very like intensely weird numbering system to make it do what I need it to do. So when you see post number 18, just ignore it. Um, those are for us so that the uh, things appear in the right order, but those numbers don't correlate to anything. So just look for the, um, the titles that go with the stuff that you need to post. Um, so for Tuesday and Wednesday, um, the structure is more or less the same, and it's a good opportunity to talk about a, a really critical feature of the ACE framework, which is that under each value, um, we have identified um, four practices, two practices that we identify at the course level and two that we identify at the assignment level. Um, and those really make up the large portion of the ACE framework. Um, and so on Tuesdays, we are always going to be asking you to interact with, interrogate the practices at the course level for that week's value. So for this week, um, that is about high flex design and module based scheduling. So we're going to ask you to review um, the framework resource about each of those topics, read some of the readings that we've pulled for those topics, um, spend some time on the pages for each one exploring um, some of the additional uh, uh, information that's there. And then for each practice page, there are some sort of suggested assignments or um, work that you can do to explore that practice. And so we were, we've asked you to choose one, either design a high flex unit or create a module. And again, share your work in your workbook. And that's basically what every Tuesday will look like for the next three weeks. You'll be engaging with the two course level practices for that particular week's value. Um, and then on Wednesdays is when we explore the assignment level practices. So this Wednesday, that's flexible deadlines and student design and choice. Same structure, some readings, some optional additional exploration, and then choosing one of the assignments um, that we've picked from those practice pages to share in your workbook. Thursdays for the next three weeks are always what we call engagement day. So on those days, we're gonna ask you to choose two different ways that you'd like to engage. Um, one of which is um, to do some reflection and sharing in the discussion forum um, on two different topics this week. We also have a Twitter hashtag, um, ACE Framework, if you're active on Twitter and would like to engage with um, the ACE Framework and the workshop there, um, you can go to Twitter and start a thread explaining how this particular value is informing your teaching practice and preparation for the fall. And then on every practice page, there is a button um, called that's labeled submit something. Um, and you, anybody really, can go to that practice page and submit an idea, a reflection, an example, an artifact, a question related to that practice. Um, when you submit that, it will then become part of the content of the page. Um, so this is a way for you to help us grow the framework and grow the resource behind this workbook workshop. Um, with your own ideas, with your own um, experiences, with your own preparation for the fall, so that other people, not just at PSU, but in the larger world, can see that and that becomes visible, but also so the people in this workshop too can take a look at some of those ideas and those practice pages become a little bit more of a living space with people's voices and ideas reflected um, there. Um, and then on Fridays, um, that's really design day where we ask you to go back to the checklist, take a look at where you are with the things that you wanted to think about um, and spend some time really thinking about your course for the fall. Um, so list going through the checklist, listing anything that you need to work on, some ideas about how you might address that particular checklist item, um, revisiting some postings in the discussion forum that people may have put up on engagement day and engaging <laughs> further with your other participants. And then taking at least 30 minutes that day to work um, on your course design in your workbook in whatever way makes sense to your process based on the things that we've been exploring and talking about and sharing that week. Um, so that's the week's work for week one, adaptability. Um, as Robin said, we've basically suggested five hours a week and it would be great if you try and do an hour a day just because it will probably make the rhythm of all of this feel a little bit more natural and um, um, 
doable, <laughs> but obviously we understand everybody has lives. So you should work in the way that makes the most sense for you. And I see Robin's just turned her mic on. So I think she's going to jump in and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, and actually with that, I'm going to stop recording.